DMCA and music on Twitch is heavily misunderstood. The amount of misinformation about what you can and can't do is terrifying. And the amount of misinformation or downright lies being spread, especially in the small streamer space, is actually setting you up and thousands of other streamers to put their entire channel at risk. Literally years of your hard work growing your channel and you're risking it all because Bootyman69 on Twitter said, just delete your VODs, forehead, and you believed them. So today, we're not only going to break down DMCA in a way anyone can understand, disprove a bunch of terrible myths putting you at risk, and hopefully give you a bunch of safe to use music that doesn't sound like low quality MIDI tracks or the same repetitive music you hear in everyone else's streams and videos already. We need to briefly explain what DMCA is for you, the viewer, and really important that we need to set one of the biggest myths straight. You see, fear-mongering content creators have lied or misled you a little bit for their own gain. Essentially, there is a huge myth in our space that DMCA and copyright strikes are things done by Twitch. That it is a Twitch system and it's actually Twitch's fault. Often you'll hear DMCA and how Twitch is a predatory system who forced you all to delete every clip and to get banned on your own stream. And every time there is a wave of copyright strikes, everyone grabs their pitchforks, marches to social media and harasses the Twitch social staff who have nothing to do with the policy team. And in reality, DMCA is Digital Millennium Copyright Act. It is part of the US copyright law and it relates to the process of removing content from the internet if you are the legal right holder. Twitch had almost nothing to do with issuing DMCA takedowns for when streamers use music or copyrighted materials that they aren't allowed to use. You see, Twitch falls under a system called Safe Harbor, which I will not get into too much because truly you don't need to understand the intense legal rules of it. But essentially, the copyright strikes actually come from the copyright holders who own the rights to whatever it is you're using without their permission. And really, you only need to learn one single rule to make your entire stream safe, which I will tell you that rule in a second, and you will probably need some options for music, which I'll also give you in a second as well. But first, what is the main step that Twitch actually takes in this process? Well, when a streamer, or you for example, plays music or uses copyrighted material they don't own, and if Twitch's automatic systems detect it, which they do have, well then they will mute the VOD for you, the streamer's safety. If you receive a muted VOD, you know to instantly stop using the music or content because you don't have the rights to it and Twitch is concerned about the use of it. Don't worry too much if you do get muted though. Well, no, that's not true. You should worry a bit, but don't worry a lot because a muted VOD isn't a copyright strike. If you continue, however, to use the music or content that you don't have the rights to, well, the owner might issue copyright strikes and you, like many other streamers, will probably get caught up in having them issued against your account. Luckily, Twitch added a new tool to see if you've received strikes or not, which I'll show you where to find that tool later in the video, so stay tuned. LJ, LJ, LJ. That's why I have my audio split, so the music I use illegally is only when live, and it doesn't show up in my VOD after the stream. This means I get away scot-free. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I'll cover that later too, because you're in for a bit of a surprise on that one. Before we move on, why does all of this actually matter? Look, I am trying to tell you guys without getting too deep into the legal mumbo jumbo that you cannot, I repeat again, you cannot use music you do not own the rights to use. And having the rights doesn't mean paying for Spotify premium or buying a CD. That's just you buying the music to use for yourself, not to use in your stream. You need to use music you have proper permission from the rights holder to use in your content. This means either any of the services we will mention later in this video or other trusted services. Because shock and horror, just because a playlist on YouTube or Spotify says copyright free, doesn't mean it actually is. Most of those aren't and they don't even own the music they're using. Before we go any further, I'm excited to say this video is in fact sponsored. You see, I get asked all the time about the music I use on this channel, my side channel and on my streams. And these days I really only use Epidemic Sound and I love it so much. They have over 35,000 songs across every single genre, and no matter what type of music you as a creator like to use, I promise you, they will have something that fits you and your content. That most importantly is safe to use and completely okay to be monetized across all platforms. I love how easy it is to find new music as well. Every three to six months, I like to refresh my entire stream by adding new songs, getting rid of old ones, 
So I just go to Epidemic, hit Browse, and I sort by different genres, popularity, new releases, and it takes no time at all. I don't just use their normal tracks either. I also have circus music, epic battle music, and I have even sneaky music that I'll switch to with a hotkey on my stream deck or other tool, depending on what I'm doing in the stream. Hey, if I'm going up against a big boss, you know I need some epic battle music to help me get through it. I love oh! That's not my best moment. But LJ, I want to keep risking my channel by playing whatever I want. Look, I know you love Kanye West, Billy, but what is the point of working so hard to grow your stream only to lose it overnight when record labels learn what Twitch actually is, which is happening faster and faster every year, and then they choose to strike everyone into the ground again. And to help you start using the right types of music, we're offering you a 30-day free trial for Epidemic Sound with the link in the description. You can use that right now to try their service for 30 days and realize just how amazing it is. The best part about this is though, I will also cover a few other free services soon, and I still need to show you where you can actually check the Twitch copyright tools. But first, it's important to show you how to credit artists, which is really hard to do because every artist actually requests credit in a different way. For example, Epidemic Sound is actually really easy. It just asks you to connect your username to your Epidemic account, and that is it. But for services like Chillhop, they require a panel and a link in the description or your streams about section. Because everyone is different, there's no rule of thumb when it comes to crediting an artist that you're using. So instead, what I like to do is I try to find a page about how to credit and I follow that. Or because again, there's no real standard. Sometimes they might call it a Creative Commons page or a licensing page where they explain how to credit them, where you can use it and where to go from there. Everyone is different and you just have to do your best to follow their guidelines. Personally, though, I won't use music unless I have found a section on licensing or Creative Commons beforehand. Because as I mentioned earlier, just because something says copyright free doesn't mean it is. For the love of God, please stop trusting random Spotify radio stations or YouTube playlists. Most YouTube playlists out there that say copyright free, I find, are just using epidemic sound music and then not telling you guys that they're using someone else's music. But what about getting permission from artists? Well, that said, I've also emailed artists in the past to get express permission from them. And I do use some music from independent artists who I've spoken to, but it is very important to know even this is risky. For example, I have one artist who I reached out to and got full express permission to use their music written down in an email. I did it all by the book. We're good to go. But a month later, they signed with a record label that didn't sign off and agree on this. And all their music was suddenly no longer allowed and was actually getting muted on Twitch. And I couldn't use it anymore. Despite the fact that I had a one-to-one -one with that artist, their record label wasn't okay with it. So be aware that receiving permission doesn't actually always mean you get the rights to use it because sadly, it's a lot more complicated than that. Speaking of complicated, how do we check if we get copyright strikes on Twitch and what happens if we do? Well, if you want to find out if you have a copyright strike, head to your Twitch dashboard, which is located inside your profile picture and then click on create a dashboard. On the left, you'll see content, click that and then click copyright claims. Ta-da! This will tell you if you have any current claims or strikes. Fun fact, if you get three claims here, well then Twitch will delete your channel. But before you get upset, YouTube has the exact same three strike policy and this is very standard. Which brings me to the next myth. Splitting your audio so live music doesn't appear in your VOD. This logic is really funny to me because up until last year when the largest amount of strikes and DMCA takedowns in Twitch history happened, most streamers had the logic of, I can play whatever I want. It's live content, baby. Record labels don't know about it and I haven't been caught yet. I just can't put the music in YouTube videos because y YouTube actually detects it there. And as you can imagine, the logic didn't hold up, leading to a lot of streamers receiving hundreds of strikes overnight, a lot of them being banned, and the rest having to delete every single VOD or clip they had of their stream. And now following the exact same logic, streamers are saying if they split their tracks so it doesn't appear in their VOD, they'll be safe because they believe right holders won't be able to detect the music while they're live. Especially because several large creators in this space, people who run agencies, who work with record labels, who are in the thick of this industry, have said that smart record labels have started using live detection to find people on Twitch who are doing these things. And honestly, it's only gonna get more advanced as we go forward. The logic of, I haven't been caught yet, so it's fine, is honestly, idiotic and it is the same logic that led to a wave of strikes last year and the same logic people who speed in cars use 
There are amazing creators out there spreading this logic, telling people to do this. And weirdly, I hope they are correct and they never get caught. But knowing how brutal the music industry is and how mainstream live streaming is becoming, I don't feel confident in these people, which is why you need to use music that is safe. So what are my top services to use for music? Well, let me rattle them off quickly and I will link them in the description as well. First, of course, Epidemic Sound. I don't need to pitch it again. It is the best of the best. It is professional quality music. It doesn't sound like all the other services. And while it is paid technically, it does have that 30 day free trial. It is fairly affordable for new creators and incredibly easy to use. Not a single creator I know who has started using Epidemic has regretted it or canceled it with them. Second, you all know them already most likely, but I have to shout them out, is Chillhop. Probably the most extensive library of lo-fi. They've been a go-to free service for years, long before all this DMCA drama actually started happening with Twitch. They do require panel and description crediting for their music, but they make it so easy and clear for you with their how to set up and credit page. But I really love Chillhop because they have these giant hour-long mixes of lo-fi that perfectly sit behind your content and just add the right vibe. But of course, because they are so well known, it can be a little bit samey since everyone uses them already. Third recommendation, look, I know most of you are gamers. So what happens when old school video game tracks get remixed professionally? Game jobs, baby. All your favorite game tracks remixed into lo-fi, EDM and more, while also being safe to use with credit. That's amazing. Of course, though, it is incredibly high quality and it's free. It's very nostalgic, which means it's used by a lot of creators already. Don't think that's really a problem for most of you though. You'll just love it. Fourth, if we're talking about being used by a lot of creators, well, we have to talk about no copyright sound. These guys have been on the internet since before you were born practically. And every single Call of Duty montage or League of Legends video has used their music already. Seriously, these were the OGs for gaming video music. If you go to their channel and saw by most popular, I promise you'll recognize one of the top tracks. Great service, does require credit, but it's free to use, very well known for a very good reason. And finally, I really don't need to recommend them because most of you who watch this channel would have heard of it already. It's Stream Beats by Harris Heller. I, again, don't need to say anything here. If you're a streamer, you know Harris, you've heard Stream Beats, you'll be fine. I think it's really important to say that music can go a long way to help your content be more engaging, but at its core, you need to practice and become more confident and more entertaining, which is actually easy if you know the right steps. So click here and watch this video. It'll help you do just that and grow as a content creator. I'll see you guys next week.